Ever heard of that classic TV series from the late 1950s? It's about an all-American family with two kids. There's a mischievous little boy and his older brother. The show follows their everyday adventures and the lessons they learn. There's a bunch of interesting stuff about this show you might not know. Stick around to find out. Now, do you have a story about how this show impacted your life? Maybe it inspired you or taught you something valuable. Share your story below. When did you first watch this show? Was it on a lazy Sunday afternoon or during a family TV night? Let us know. Get ready for some eye-opening facts that will make you see this show in a whole new light. But no spoilers here. Keep watching to uncover the surprises. Your memories and experiences are what make this show special. So, don't be shy, share them below. In the late 1950s, a television series captured the hearts of many with its portrayal of suburban family life. It followed the everyday adventures of a typical family, resonating deeply with viewers. The show's influence on later family sitcoms was significant, inspiring similar themes and storylines. Following its success, spin-offs continued the story of the central family, keeping the legacy alive. These spin-offs maintained the charm and appeal of the original show. Moreover, merchandise based on the series, such as toys and clothing, became popular among fans. The show's depiction of family dynamics and funny situations left a lasting impression on audiences. Its influence can still be felt in modern entertainment, with many drawing inspiration from its wholesome charm. Overall, the show's lasting popularity and cultural significance speak volumes about its quality and timeless appeal. Barbara Billingsley, formerly Camise before marrying Glenn Billingsley in 1940, portrayed June Cleaver across six different series. She played the iconic character in a variety of shows, including The Love Boat, Elvero's movie Macabre, The New Leave It to Beaver, Baby Boom, and Hi Honey, I'm Home. Jerry Mathers is predominantly recognized for his lead role as the title character in the series. In early script versions of Airplane, the writing and directing team considered having Jerry Mathers and Tony Dow reprised their roles as Beaver and Wally Cleaver. The idea was scrapped, but Barbara Billingsley did a cameo in the film. Hugh Beaumont appeared in educational and industrial films as both an actor and narrator. Stephen Talbot, brother of journalist David Talbot, is connected to the series through his siblings' work. So, there's this interesting mix of connections between the show and other projects. Barbara Billingsley, known for her role in the iconic TV series, was singing at her former co-star's mother's 80th birthday party when he returned from Broadway. She was briefly related by marriage to Peter Billingsley's father, who is famous for his role in A Christmas Story. Richard Deacon, another cast member, took up dancing at age 11 to build up his legs after being stricken with polio. These anecdotes shed light on the lives of the actors behind the beloved characters. Barbara Billingsley started her role in the TV series at the age of 41. Stephen Talbot, known for his documentary work, helped bring attention to Beryl Markham's memoir through his film. He also contributed to his family's welfare by securing a home in San Francisco. Margaret Talbot, Steve's sister, penned a memoir and a biography about their father, actor Lyle Talbot. Both works shed light on their family's legacy in the entertainment industry. Barbara Billingsley, known for her role in the series, crossed paths with Jim Henson before voicing Nanny on Muppet Babies. Hugh Beaumont, who portrayed the father figure, had a career trajectory shaped by World War II, rising in Hollywood during the absence of major stars. Eddie Haskell, a character known for his quirky traits, often used alternative names for others, adding depth to his persona throughout the series. His creative name calling, particularly towards Wally, showcased his playful demeanor. The variety of names he used, such as Rock, Muscles, and Gertrude, added humor to the show's dynamic. These nuances contributed to the charm and wit of the series, enriching the character interactions and humor within the storyline. It's these subtleties that helped to define the show's enduring appeal. Following its conclusion, several actors from the series pursued diverse paths. Hugh Beaumont retired from show business in the late 1960s, later cultivating a second career as a Christmas tree farmer in Minnesota. Unfortunately, his endeavors were hindered by a stroke in 1972. Ken Osmond spent most of his 18 years of service assigned to Central Traffic Division, where he went unrecognized for his role as Eddie Haskell. Additionally, Hugh Beaumont, known for his portrayal of Ward Cleaver, not only acted but also engaged in writing and directing. He scripted one episode solo and contributed to several others while directing 23 episodes. These post-series trajectories reflect the diverse talents and pursuits of the show's cast. Tony Dow stumbled into his well-known acting role almost accidentally. He joined a friend who was auditioning for a part 
and unexpectedly ended up becoming a key part of a beloved TV series. Despite having no prior acting experience or dreams of being an actor, Dow's natural talent stood out and earned him a spot in the cast. John Hoyt took a different path to television from his academic pursuits. As a Yale graduate, he discovered his creative side by contributing to the university's humor magazine. His very talents went beyond acting, bringing a unique background and experiences to the show. Meanwhile, Hugh Beaumont's resilience and determination became an inspiration both on and off the screen. Despite facing challenges from a stroke, Beaumont defied medical expectations and started a new phase in his career. Through directing and involvement in community theater, he continued to make meaningful contributions to the world of entertainment. These individuals added depth and authenticity to the series, connecting with audiences for generations. Their diverse backgrounds and unexpected journeys only enhanced the charm and appeal of the timeless show. Leave it to Beaver, in many ways, reflected the varied paths and talents of those involved, making a lasting impact on television history. In the world of 1950s TV shows, there's a standout figure, Tony Dow. He comes from a family with a cool background. His mom did stunts in old cowboy movies, and his dad was into building stuff. Tony Dow found his groove in a famous TV series. When Tony was growing up, there's a character named June who went off to boarding school. This little detail gives us more insight into her life, making the story richer. There's this other character, Larry Mondello, whose sister is talked about but never seen. It's like she's a ghost in the story. Larry's dad pops up briefly during a school play episode where Larry's the star. All these little tales about the characters make the TV show interesting and keep viewers hooked. Barbara Billingsley's granddaughter, Taylor, aspired to follow her grandmother's path into acting. However, Taylor's parents vetoed her early involvement as a child actress. Meanwhile, Stephen Talbot took on the role of Beaver's sidekick, Gilbert. Interestingly, during the same period, his father, actor Lyle Talbot, portrayed Joe Randolph, Ozzie Nelson's best friend on The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. Later in his career, Stephen Talbot shifted gears, achieving prominence as a writer-producer director of documentaries, notably contributing to numerous projects for PBS. Despite his connection to Leave it to Beaver, Stephen Talbot consistently declined invitations to participate in reunion shows related to the series. Jerry Weil, who played Judy Hensler, left the show due to the onset of puberty. Unwilling to comply with the wardrobe department's efforts to conceal her changing appearance, she chose to part ways with the series. Jerry transitioned to a successful real estate career after leaving acting behind. Despite this, she maintained connections with Jerry Mathers and Tony Dow, occasionally participating in joint events and making a brief return to acting after 27 years in the new Leave It to Beaver the Bruise Brothers. Barbara Billingsley, known for her role in the series, had a family background quite distinct from her on-screen persona. Her mother, Lillian Camez, worked in a factory, while her father, Robert Collier Camez, served as the chief of police. The character Fred Rutherford, portrayed by Richard Deacon, saw reduced screen time in the final season. This was due to Deacon simultaneously playing Mel Cooley on The Dick Van Dyke Show. As a result, his appearances as the pompous Fred Rutherford were scaled back. These behind-the-scenes details provide a glimpse into the dynamics that shaped the production and cast of the iconic series. Each actor faced unique challenges and pursued diverse paths beyond the world of Leave it to Beaver. Barbara Billingsley, a popular student at George Washington High School, was voted homecoming queen. In the show, they depicted a toilet, albeit not showing the pedestal and seat, but did show the tank and flush handle. Interestingly, the house used for exterior shots of the Cleavers' second home later became Marcus Welby's house in the show Marcus Welby, M.D. Hugh Beaumont, just a year before his retirement, made a guest appearance on Marcus Welby in 1970, where the character Dr. Welby was living in his house, and he couldn't say anything about it. 